What's up everybody? Spare with a gun here from Sleepless Nights with another episode on Space Engineers, and this is our update episode of the week. Um, and once again, uh, Keen Software House, the devs for Space Engineers, have kind of done another one of those things that, you know, gives you something you never knew you wanted, right? So there's a couple of major things to this update, and then there's a few things that are kind of minor. So let's go over the minor ones first. Let's see if this change will ever come up. So there's two new world settings. There's permanent death and client-side saving. Basically, client-side saving, you can disable now. I'm, I'm relatively sure, I may be wrong, but I'm relatively sure that it's always been active and now you can turn it off. That it's basically when you guys join multiplayer servers and things like that, um, that the clients that log into the host game can save, or the dedicated server, whatever, they can still save a copy of the world onto their um, local machine. I believe they remo they, that that option will turn that off to where now it's only the dedicated server or the host of the peer-to-peer -peer that can actually save. Um, the other one's permanent death, which we've seen before, which was where if you don't have a medical room logged to your ownership and you die, you come back as a whole new astronaut, and you don't have any of your stuff, you can't access anything. That can apparently be disabled now. Um, I don't know entirely what that means other than the fact that you might come back and just maybe not have changed your astronaut. You might be the same guy still. Um, so that, those are the two kind of simple things. Um, the other one is the copy and paste into existing ships. This is kind of cool. So, say we make a new ship, right? And I'm sure all of you have run into this before. Oops, not that. Um, not that. How do you... Did I not? I might not have turned on copy and paste, actually. Let's see if I derped up or not. So let's say we want to add this leg to the ship or something, right? Yeah, I don't I don't think Hold on a minute. Okay. I had to reload cuz I didn't have copy and paste on, which is hard to demonstrate copy and paste functionality. So before we know that this wouldn't have worked. Like you would have put it there and it wouldn't do anything, but you'll notice it's kind of popping around now. That's because it has now been enabled you can copy and paste to an existing ship. So how cool is that? That, I think, is going to be a big deal um, for future designs and stuff. Being able to compartmentalize, build it piece by piece, and then put it together um, like that. That's just awesome. Um, so that's, that's one of those, it's a little thing, but I'm sure it'll really make a big big deal later. Um, the next thing is the communications relay. Now this this is tricky and I may even include, you can check the description, I might even include Keen Software's actual change update log themselves, like their video, because they had a really neat diagram of it all that I don't think you can access in here. Um, because I tried looking to see how they did it, and I don't. I think it was just something they did for the video. Basically, what they did the sh the short version. Let's let's do it the short way, and then I'll go into more detail. The short version is you can now get the antennas, and they have a broadcast radius, right? And it does change how much power they use, but you can affect how far it broadcasts, right? That's the short version, basically. Is that um, if you change the radius to a point where you're outside of its range, you can't see it. Simple. But, but, the complicated version is that if you can tweak the radiuses just right, you can actually piggyback the signals, right? So, for example, the blue 2 antenna over there, I'm, I'm guessing, I could be wrong, but I'm guessing it does not have the range to reach all the way over here. It's probably bouncing to red one or to this antenna platform and then showing up. So let's see if I can demonstrate this correctly without making myself look like a total derp. Um, which is eh, debatable. Probably won't happen. I'll probably derp something up. But I think I understand it to the point 
of simplifying it because it honestly took me a while to kind of wrap my head around what they were talking about. So this is a hundred or ten kilometers that this will reach to, right? So if we were to crank this down like to 50 meters, right? Uh, actually, let's go lower than that. Let's go to 10. Okay, so we're at 10 meters now. Actually, no, we're not even seeing it anymore. Okay. Okay, that's fine. 75 meters, that's fine. So, now, if I go... Actually, let's see if I can use it this way. If I go this way, and we go 75 meters out, I should lose that antenna. Boom, there it is. Actually, let's... <laughs> Let's crank that down. That's a bad example. See? I'm already derping stuff up. I haven't even gotten to the batteries yet. That's the big deal of this episode. So let's say 40. Okay, so I can still see it from 40. Um, that's 30. Boom. We lose it. Right about here. Okay. So we should lose it right about here. Okay. Boom. No good. Now, let's see how well I've wrapped my head around this. Because I probably have not, but let's just see. So we're about 140 meters from the antenna platform, right? 140, 150, something like that. So let's see now what this one's set at. Okay, that's way more than I thought it would be. Maybe it has to do with ownership. Okay, so this one's set to mine now. And it is set very far away. Now, I, it might have to do with ownership, actually, because they did change this in the video before doing the other stuff that had to do with all this. That's odd, because essentially what they were talking about, and you can look in the diagram in their video, I think I am going to include that because I'm not doing a very good job here of explaining it, is they were making it seem that as long as that antenna was within the range of this antenna, or something like that, that you should still be able to see it because this one is picking up that one and I'm within this one's radius or something? But it doesn't seem to be doing that. So I don't know if I'm just not understanding it correctly or what. Because I really thought that I had a handle on how that worked. Um, but I guess I do not. Because they were basically showing that you could piggyback the signals to where you could have them all over your base and then those would go to one and then those would go to others and then you'd have like a central antenna array that picked up all of their signals and if anybody flew into your radius you could see it but it doesn't seem to be doing that because this one is set ridiculously far so it should be picking up that antenna over there and since I'm in the radius of this one it should be showing it to me is how I understood it like it's hard to explain but there should be like a ring of about 40 meters, but that one is like a, like 10 kilometers, so it should be picking this one up, and when I leave the 40 meter radius, it should still be showing it. So I must have misunderstood something, but I'll include a link in the description um, for the antenna diagram, or for the actual Keen software demo of the update and I'll set it to the proper time so you guys can all just click on it and it'll take you right to the antenna diagram. How's that? That should that should help. Maybe it'll maybe you guys will see something I don't and, and explain it to me and make it click. I don't know. So now we come to the big Mac Daddy of this episode. Uh, apparently solar solar panels are now cheaper and more efficient. I didn't remember seeing them mention that. Oh yeah, they look a lot cheaper. Um, the big hullabaloo this episode is batteries. We got batteries. 
Um, now granted, I've only seen these in the video. I have not messed around with them. I don't know how they work. Ah, we already discovered something. They need the white plugs to plug into either a block that is powered or a battery. Let's confirm that theory right now. Wait, this is... wait, do I just not have it on? That's probably all it is. Oh, it's on. Recharge. Nope. Okay, so how do they have this plugged in? Wait a minute. That doesn't make any sense. Oh! Something's... something's happening. Come on. Max current input, max required input. Recharge off. I... I broke something. I broke it. I think I broke it. I don't understand what I did. <laughs> okay. I'm just doing a lovely job. Okay, it is storing power. This one... is also storing power. Okay. So I might have been wrong. You might not need to plug in... or maybe... Maybe it's because of how I have this set up. Let's try it this way. Aha! There it is. Wait, no. Crud. Storing power. Okay. So apparently, it doesn't matter about these white prongs. Never mind. Pay no attention to me. So, batteries. Basically what they do is they store energy. Go figure. Um, now how this is how this works is you can see they've added a whole bunch of stuff over here. They've got a max output, a max required input, and a max stored power. So it can only store the MWH, which is megawatt huge. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I... I Someone explained this to me one time, and I just forgot what all the different things... I know W means watts and all that stuff, but I just forgot what they all mean. Um, I think it's... The low M is milliwatts? The K... MK... No, KW is um, kilowatts. I think a little M is milli, but they don't use that in the game. I think it's kilowatts, megawatts... Um, which is this, and then the megawatt H is, like, a lot more. I don't know. I don't remember what the H stands for. Um, and I could be wrong on all of those fronts, but that's just what I, I thought it did. Anyways, so we got max output. Max required input means this is how much it requires to take in order for it to uh, uh, store efficiently, like store at 100% rate. So... If we were to put this battery on something, like take one of the solar panels out, right? Actually, we could, we could do that, maybe. Um, let's copy... Wait, no. Can I not? Ah, whatever. Uh, we'll just grab solar panels for this spot. Remove that one. And let's just remove that one. Still... Oh, current input is zero. Zero? Wait a cotton picking minute here. Hold on. Didn't mean to do that. Come on. Do your thing. There we go. I wonder why that's only at one. Okay, that has to, like, charge up. Never mind. So current input is zero. Why is that zero? Maybe because it doesn't need it. That's probably what it is. Okay, so bad example. <laughs> but say you need four MW, right? That's the max required input. If you had two, 
right? You only had two coming into it. It would be charging at 50% what it should. So it still does take a charge. It's just inefficient. Let's see if this guy is a good example. Current input 4. Right, after I just got done doing that. Current input 4. Oh, it's connected to the reactors. Never mind, it won't. Crap. Crap, man. All my examples are just being horribly wrong. So let me explain the mechanics. So, the input is what's coming in. The output, the max output is this is how much power it can it can put out at one at one time. Um, you will never get more than this amount from a battery. Um, required input, like I said, is the efficiency that if you put less than this, like it says, current input is four. If this were two, it would not be charging at this much power. It wouldn't be charging this fast. It would be it would take you 20 minutes or whatever. It's less efficient. Um, so I, I, from watching their video, and you can double check if I'm if I'm inaccurate or not, but from watching their video, it seemed to say that it will still charge, but it's operating on a lower efficiency rate, so it'll take more power to, to charge it up, basically, that you're wasting energy is the idea. Um, current output is if it's charging anything, so when you're flying or something, or, or running an assembler off of the battery, it'll tell you what your current output is. Max stored power, this is how much it can store total. And then the current stored power, see KWH, so that's another measurement, I don't know what it is. But basically, oh, I get it. So a thousand KWH should be one MWH, and then a thousand KW is, or yeah, a thousand KW is one MW, maybe. Sure, that works. No. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Nope, my math's way off on that. Don't don't pay attention to me. Math's not important. Um, <laughs> the important part is the mechanics, and the math part can come later. You can Google it, Wikipedia, whatever. Um, but the mechanics are the important part, and so those are what all these little things do. Now, if they're off, obviously a lot of this function doesn't work. Right? No current input, no charge, blah, 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 blah. Now... Now let's go over the lights. Ah! We have a light. So when it's blue, it means it's recharging. Obviously when all four are blue, it means it's either maxed out or close to being maxed out. Right? Right. Good. Um, actually, I may have been right. Because we're over a hundred and... or wait. We're over 250, and 250 would be a quarter. So... We'll have to check this and see when it hits 500 or around there if this second dot lights up and then we'll know that uh, a thousand kwh is one mwh we'll see we, we shall see so basically the blue lights mean charging and then it gives you the scale of what it's charging at now if we were to turn recharge off it's currently outputting for mw and it will be depleted in 15 minutes now you'll see the lights go green that means it's on, active, and outputting. Um, if we were to place one here, you'll notice it's red. So one red light, in, in my understanding, means it's fully depleted, it is on and it is active, but it's empty. So red's empty, green's full. Um, and both are running. Blue means it's not being actively running, it's being charged. And there's something... I can't remember. Off is all red. That's what it is. Let's double check to see if that is correct. Yes. So all red is off. Green means it's got power and is outputting. One red means it's on, but it's empty. A couple of blue lights means it's recharging. All blue lights means it's not outputting, but it is recharging. So that's pretty much your light stages for... Um, for that. Actually, that's not a half bad screenshot, to be honest. So let's do something like that. There we go. So that's kind of how the batteries work, and then you can, the other thing you can do now 
is all these I think they redid with to have battery. Yeah, they're all they're all with batteries. But the cool part is solar panels can charge batteries. So all like we now have a big use for solar panels now, which will be awesome. Because before they never really did a whole lot because you could never hold a charge, so you had to have enough panels to fly on whatever they powered if you wanted a sole solar panel ship. This way you can charge up batteries, pick up the batteries, so on and so forth, and and look at this little doodad trick that I thought of. Well, not really me, but just when they were talking about it, I'm sure a lot of people did. Merge block on a battery. What? So you could do like a stack of batteries, a merge block, connect it to this with another merge block, you know, fly by, pick up the battery, detach it, fly off, so on and so forth, and, you know, recharge your batteries. So what you could do, turn on the battery, turn off recharge, currently, oh, is this not, wait a minute, that seems stored power, oh, Max sword powers this. Okay, because it's a small ship, so the small ones hold less. The big ones are the ones that hold one MWH. Now, where large reactor? So this is currently powering the ship. If we turn off the reactor, uh, current output six point six three, and you can see it down in the window over there. Fuel time two days. So it's it's saying. Um, number of batteries in use is one, so you'll notice that there's it's not running off the reactor. It shouldn't be running off the reactor anyway. Yeah, reactor's off. So yeah, it shouldn't be running on the reactor. And when you use power, it shows you what's changing and how many batteries are in use. Now the other really neat thing, the last little thing we'll comment on here, is connectors. Connectors will allow you to... Come on. Will allow you to charge. So it says fuel time 19. But if we go to the battery and we tell it to recharge... Uh, well, it's not really recharging because it doesn't need anything, but you get the idea. It'll actually allow current to pass through the connector so you can recharge yourself. So basically, what you could do, and it's something, let me go, thank you, it's something that I've thought, I think I'm going to do in my survival world, is set up a station like this with a few solar panels, connected to a couple batteries, like that are big, your small ships are powered by battery, when they start to get drained, you fly over, connect them, dock them, leave them, and let them charge up, when they charge up, then you can just disconnect them and fly away, you don't need to have a ton of reactors and everything, uh, you could just build a bunch of batteries and use solar panels and let them charge. I mean, it's it's an alternative. It's not some... Obviously, reactors and uranium will produce the most power the fastest. I mean, it's just that's the way they designed the game. It's just going to do that. But, for those of you that are like me, that, are like, that like efficiency, you like infinite stuff, you never like running out of resources, this is an awesome way to do things, is actually using the solar panels, finally, that they have are like a really good use, charge up batteries, charge your ships, and bada bing bada boom, you're done. Um, so yeah, uh, I'll include the, um, the main official update video for those of you that want to have a more explained diagram definition of the antenna system, and if you notice something that I got wrong or misunderstood, feel free to let me know. Um, I am in no way a guru about this stuff, I just watch their stuff and comment on how I see it. So I definitely misunderstood how they were seeing this, I think, because this is not working how I thought it was supposed to. So let me know what you guys think. In the meantime, I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, leave a like, and I will see you all next time. Peace!